Hey, welcome back to the Business of Fun podcast. I don't know what I'm going to call this, but special classes or special sessions. Today is Tuesday, June, January 26th when I'm recording this. And today I want to talk to you about research, market research. And I bring this one up because to me, market research is the key to being a successful marketer or strategist. And with so many new data tools, conversations about big data, uh, conversations about research, uh, many, many different viewpoints and ideas floating around, it can feel very overwhelming or very uh, difficult for people to understand exactly what research means, what it should look like, how to deal with it in their organization. So I want to talk to you really quickly today about three things that you need to know about research. And then I'm going to give you a method that I learned from my marketing professor, a guy by the name of Mark Ritson, called Backwards Market Research to help you think through and use your research practice a little bit more effectively. So the first three things I want to talk to you about today and teach you are, one is ethnography, qualitative research, and quantitative research. Um, and you need to know about these three things together because they kind of they build off of each other. The first thing, ethnography, is really simple. It's just basically at its simplest thing going and talking to people. Uh, there's a much more formalized definition of it. Uh, but ethnography at its simple, most useful form is to go out and in a, interact with your customers, with your audience, with people to see how they're actually using your products or services, right? Don't just guess. Go observe. Go check them out, right? That's the first thing. The second idea to talk about is qualitative research. And that's things like focus groups where you go and talk to people, right? Maybe you get a group of six, eight, 10, 12 people together. Um, find out what everybody's dealing with, what their challenges are, what, what they like, what they don't like, right? Um, I'm very very famous of doing this when I go and do traveling in the before times when I would have a happy hour where I get people together and I could meet people, talk to them, get an understanding of what the situation is for people in a less formal setting, right? In the, these qualitative conversations can be formal or informal. Totally doesn't matter. It's Think of it as a focus group um, or a small group gathering where you or someone you hire can have conversations to ask people questions about different aspects or different parts of your products or services to get some kind of um, one-to-one -one or a few, uh, you know, a small group of information fed back to you. The third one is quantitative. Uh, these are surveys. This is big groups of data. Um, last week in the Talking Tickets newsletter, which is a weekly newsletter I do for people in sports, uh, concerts, uh, performing arts, anything that has to do with a live experience, I talked about a survey that an organization that I'm very uh, familiar with called Audience You did, where they surveyed um, over 3,000 people, which is bulletproof as far as like feedback. You are, have beyond a representative sample. And I highlighted it because if you, the more you people you can get, the better the information is. There's no doubt about it. But what I want to teach people about is the idea that a representative sample of your audience or your target audience is more than enough. And there are calculators that you can put into Google. Just ask for a representative sample calculator that will enable you to understand how big of a sample size you need for your market. In many cases, the number might be three, four, five hundred people. And it's easy to get because now there are very sophisticated firms that allow you to survey customers and prospects and potential members of your market through text or email, um, you know, over, still over the phone, which is how a lot of them happen. But there's all these different ways that people can engage with your surveys now. And so it, it's become easier and easier to use qualitative, quantitative data. Um, and the reason I laid them out from ethnography to quantitative to qual or qualitative to quantitative is because they build off of each other, right? You can make some observations by going out and watching people that will lead you to some be asking better questions of, of a group 
in a focus group setting so that you get some qualitative data. And then using the qualitative data, you have the opportunity to expand on that and use those observations and ideas in your quantitative survey methods. Um, you know, so this will help you either make sense of big data or put it aside because the answer really is in most cases we're drowning in data and we don't know how to use it. And so we end up succumbing to the idea of paralysis by analysis. And that leads me to this idea that I said, you know, um, I learned from my marketing professor, uh, Mark Ritson. It's called backwards market research, and it consists of three things. Really simple. Number one is you decide what you want to know, right? What's the question you're trying to answer? Then you move on to deciding how you want to show that answer. Graphs, numbers, um, what, you know, what vehicle do you need to show the, the information that answers your question? How, how do you want to be able to show it off to people? Answer that. And then you design your, th your survey with those first two things in mind. Um, most surveys probably need to be 30 questions or less. Um, but you start by understanding what your question you're trying to answer for or what information you're looking to find out about. Decide how you want to show it. And then design your survey around those first two things. That's backwards mar market research. It helps bring all of your market research and all of your data to life in a way that opens the door to you to do proper marketing strategy work. Um, and hopefully the, today's lesson on research gives you something to use or think about. You know, so check me out on the on my website, DaveWakeman.com. Follow me on the Twitters at David Wakeman. Uh, connect with me on the LinkedIn. Um, if you dig this kind of stuff, you can also get my newsletter. It's the business of value, and you get that at businessofvalue.substack.com. And tomorrow I will be back with da, 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 another lesson and it may be about pricing. All right, talk to you soon. Let me know if these things work for you by sending me an email at davidavewakeman.com. All right, I'm going to maybe work on expanding these. So thanks again for listening.